discuss the parts of a microscope. So please have your lab ready or the picture that is on Schoology and you can fill in as we go. So the first part of the microscope is the eyepiece. The eyepiece is the one that's going to be closest to your eye. Uh, the piece of glass in there is called the ocular lens. The ocular lens has a magnification of 10 times. Uh, you can see the number uh, on the actual lens itself. Every microscope should have a number printed there for how much that one single piece of glass will magnify the image. So the eyepiece holds the ocular lens. The next piece, number two, is the body tube. This is a barrel that separates the two lenses of the microscope, so the one closest to your eye and the one closest to the specimen. The body tube makes sure that the two lenses are lined up correctly and are the right distance apart. In this particular microscope, you notice that it's kind of bent, so there are mirrors within there that are going to reflect the image of the specimen as it passes through the body tube and pushing that image towards your eye. The next piece is the arm. Sometimes this is also called the pillar arm. The arm supports all of the top part of the microscope. We call that some of the working pieces. This is one of the parts that you can and should hold onto while you are carrying the scope around. Part number four is the stage. The stage has stage clips on it. Um, this is where you put the slide. The slide is placed on the stage for observation. Stage clips should be used to hold the slide in place. Um, I will show you how to use these. You press down on the back and the front part will lift up so you can put the slide in there. You should make a habit of using the stage clips because it's really tough if you have a slide on there and the microscope accidentally gets bumped, you might lose what you were looking at. Number five, we're moving to the adjustment knobs. The bigger knob is called the coarse adjustment knob. If you turn this, you will notice that the stage will move up and down. It moves the stage with the specimen on it, the slide, closer and further from those lenses. Uh, you will always use this first. It makes the, the image go pretty fast up and down um, in comparison to the other knob. And so you will use this to get your initial focus. After you get the initial focus, you might want to like make a tiny, tiny adjustment, and that's where you will use the smaller knob. The smaller knob is the fine adjustment knob. This is to fine tune that spoke, the focus of your specimen. You should use this after you use the coarse adjustment knob. When you go from one power to the next, you should not need to use the coarse adjustment knob any longer. You will only use this knob once you get it focused and move to a higher power. Part number seven is the lamp or the light source. This is going to be placed under the specimen. This will provide light that will pass through the specimen and into the lenses. So a compound light microscope uses light to enlarge an image as it pa the light passes through the lenses. Um, some of the scopes have a dimmer switch that goes along with the lamp. Ours do have a dimmer switch, so you can adjust the brightness of the light that is passing through the specimen. Number eight is the revolving nose piece. This is going to hold all three of the objective lenses that we're going to talk about next. You turn this to change the magnification, and make sure when you turn this that you feel the little click to make sure that the lens is completely straight and in place. Um, so if you notice, there are three lenses that come off of this revolving nose piece. The first lens, we'll start with the shortest, the first lens we'll call scanning power objective lens. All three of these are objective lenses, the lenses that are closest to the specimen, and we're going to start with the one that has the lowest magnification. This is also the shortest lens. The lens um, in our scopes, there's writing on the lens, it's written in red. This lens you want to use first and as its name suggests you are going to scan the slide to see where you want to zoom in. If you notice in purple it says the field of view decreases as you use a higher power. Well you guys know when you zoom in on stuff you can't see as much so you want to use scanning power the lowest power to scan around on your microscope and the spot you want to zoom in on place it right in the center 
and then you can continue on and move to the next higher power. The next lens, that middle sized lens, is the low power objective lens. This has a magnification of 10 times. It is, um, has a yellow writing on our microscopes in our classroom, and this is used to view a larger area of the specimen. So it gets into further detail, but the field of view isn't teeny tiny like it will be for the next one. So the third and final objective lens, the longest one, is the high power objective lens. This lens has a magnification of 40 times. Um, on our scopes, it has blue writing on it, and this is used to view the smallest specimen areas or the smallest things you want to see. Number 12 will be underneath the stage. This is called the diaphragm. The diaphragm adjusts the amount of light that passes through the, the specimen. Sometimes it's used along with a condenser. Our scopes do have a condenser. The condenser will narrow or widen the beam of light that is passing through the specimen. So if you have a really dark or thick specimen, you may want to widen that beam of light so that more light can get through the specimen. If you have a really, really thin specimen, you may want to condense that light or narrow it or have less light coming through so that you can see it a little bit better and the bright light doesn't drown out your specimen. So adjusting this can help you see the image more clearly. And finally, number 13 is the base. The base is the bottom support of the microscope. This is the other part that you are going to hold while carrying. Remember, you will always use two hands to carry a microscope. Okay, you should never use one and you should never, ever, ever carry the microscope by the body tube, which reminder is number two up there. So the base and number three, the arm, are how you wanna carry the microscope. To figure out how much you are magnifying any specimen, you will always need to calculate total magnification. So we talked about number one, the ocular lens, and numbers nine, 10, and 11, the objective lenses, and I gave you their individual magnification. But when you're looking through both of them at the same time, you are magnifying one and then magnifying that image again. So to calculate total magnification, you need to multiply the power of the ocular lens and the objective lens. So how the scope is situated right now, the ocular lens has 10 times power, and that really long objective lens has 40 times power. So if I were to look at a specimen using the scope as it is right now, 10 times 40 would be magnifying the specimen 400 times. When you look through a microscope, it is really important to keep both eyes open while you're viewing a specimen. Now, some people that's uncomfortable for because they're seeing out of both eyes and they can't focus. So if it's difficult, feel free to put your free hand over your non-dominant eye. Now, if you notice, I like to look through the scope with my right eye. That may be you too. But some people have a left eye that is dominant and that varies per person. So whichever eye is good for you, you may use. What you don't ever want to do, though, is take a whole lab period scrunching your face up because you're closing one eye. This will cause eye strain and can cause headaches if you do this for long enough. You want to really try to relax your facial, facial muscles while you're looking through the microscopes. And finally, when you're all done with the microscope, it's important to properly put away your scope. So you're going to wind up the cord. Notice that there are places on the back to wind the cord. We do not wind the cord um, around where the light source is. And then we replace the dust cover before using two hands to replace um, the microscope back in the cupboard. There are numbers on each microscope and please place them in the correct spot in the microscope cabinet. Awesome, let's get to looking at some specimens.